Good morning, folks. We've got interesting stories to hit today. We'll review the current space weather. We've got the next Observer's mini event coming up in Colorado Springs at the end of the month. But let's get started at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star was mostly calm on the Earth-facing half. Little eruption of a filament just ahead of the incoming active region. It will not be a concern. You can actually see a filament release behind the active region afterwards as well. The sunspots themselves are not developing too much. As the one up north begins departing tomorrow, our eyes draw more focus to the south, approaching center disk. There was actually one sizable eruption on the sun yesterday, but it came off the far side, facing away from Earth, and will not impact our planet. But we did get a small impact yesterday. At the pink line, you will see all the telemetry of the solar wind change almost simultaneously. Folks, that looks like a closing coronal hole. It still offers the density shock, but there is no power behind the stream at all. The speed remains relatively anemic, with no geomagnetic instability or storm conditions. Top quake of the day struck Indonesia this morning. Lots of blood echoes in the region preceding the event. Let's go out to space next, where a shock discovery has scientists excited. A massive stellar cluster in our galaxy is only 7,000 light years away, but yet it's relatively invisible to our eyes because of dust and polluting starlight. Removing those in filter, and then also the billions of background objects, reveals a massive cluster of 15,000 stars. Oh, what the dust of the universe is hiding. Up next is a teachable moment in academia. They righteously identify the environmental disaster of the last cyclical catastrophe of Earth, and indict it for the wild disappearance of the megafauna. Then they also say that humans might have played a small role, but not the dominant one. And I want to tell you it's critical to remember, stressing out the biosphere creates extra competition between species. So yes, humans likely did play a role exacerbated by that environmental disaster and the threat of annihilation. Moving on to a paper that comes so close to the finish line, talking about interactions and explosive ejections from molecular clouds. Now they say that there will begin to be gravitational interaction between pre-stellar cores that toss the objects around and destroy the cluster, but they also did this 100% with a model and admit there are no observations of the phenomena in space. That's probably because we already know what happens to wandering stars in a cloud. They don't last long. Not long enough to gravitationally kick unless there would be an early, super lucky, close approach. And with the second confirmation of the dark nova remnants inside the molecular clouds, we can confidently look back at today's paper, which was dancing with reality almost the whole way, and recognize they're missing the key interaction of stars wandering around in a molecular cloud. Folks, I'm sure it will be utterly unbelievable to you that scientists are surprised by observations. Good luck with your emotional devastation on that one, but pulling back the humor, we must all recognize that LIDAR should have caught these before. Yes, the one at Boulder from the last decade is slightly better than the others, but the magnitude of this upper atmospheric chemistry is beyond what should be believed to have been a thing of always. It's exactly the sort of chemical changes we should be seeing at the top of the sky. Reminds me of the chemical changes we're seeing on the sun. And these are expected as the magnetic event unfolds in our solar system and on our planet. And combined with its real possibility of being a new phenomenon, we ask if it's yet another Earth sign to add to the critical frequency changes, the polar summer mesospheric echo increase, and the actual observed shift in the magnetic field. Folks, you may have forgotten because the Nazism invading America didn't let us do it last year, but we often have small mini-events locally, in addition to our annual conferences. Information on the next one is at spaceweathernews.square.site, and yes, we are moving from cells. Why? First, the shipping experience was something you guys complained about almost every day, and I get it, that was a big factor. But also, Amazon bought cells, and they don't exactly like us feelings mutual. If you can make the Colorado Springs skate night with the observers, it's just the regular cost of admission. We have the whole place to ourselves, and no, you don't have to skate. You can just come be an observer. We greatly appreciate your support. That was spaceweathernews.square.site. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.